Right, well that building there was the B&B that we stayed in yesterday and it's quite possibly one of the nicest places I've ever stayed. The attention to detail is amazing of, of the rooms and the breakfast and the welcome you get. It's just absolutely incredible. Don't know why I stopped then, because there's nobody about. Right, where are we? Well, we're in a little village called Groupiliers, which is just outside Versailles. Um, and Versailles, if you know, is actually just outside Paris and uh, it's quite a, a luxurious area of France. There's lots of mansions and beautiful country cottages and villages and traditional French buildings. So I'm having a great time, really. Right, so how did I end up just outside Versailles? Well, actually this is a work trip. So my company's got a target to go carbon neutral by 2030. And what that means is that every employee is going to be surveyed on their kind of work habits, really, like what they do, how they travel, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a bit crazy, to be honest. But one of the upsides to it is, of course, that motorcycles, especially small displacement motorcycles like this one, are actually way more carbon efficient than short haul flights. And it's quite a short haul flight to go from Birmingham in the UK to Paris, obviously in France. Uh, about two and a half times less uh, polluting per person, per kilometre to go by a motorcycle than it is a plane. So I put forward a request, you know, outline this, outline the costs uh, that it would entail to go make the trip, business trip on normal flight, normal route. And if you look at the time, it's about seven hours, and of course, no hidden uh, agendas here. I thoroughly love traveling by motorcycle, so it just seemed to be a no-brainer. So weather-wise, we're at 23 degrees. Um, I got up this morning at the guest house, absolutely lovely guest house, talking to the owner, Jost, uh, and his wife, Andrea. And uh, yeah, I had a really nice time there. Oops, looks like we're going left here. Oh, right, I always get that confused. Um, cars you kind of not crossing the road to go right you know what I mean you in the UK you kind of crossing the traffic to go right we see here you go right but you don't uh, yeah so I got up in the morning uh, from the guest house to the office was about 20 minutes and it was absolutely beautiful I rode through some picturesque villages and everything I'll show you some of the video of it it's just absolutely stunning so uh, yeah nice nice time really um, oh, look at this. Wow. I mean, France isn't that mountainous, so there's not like mountains and lakes and kind of dramatic scenery. But it's the lack of hedgerows that really does it. Just the fact that I can now see the road out into the distance and uh, I'm on 80 kph, so 50 miles an hour, which is plenty, just to trundle along these, these winding roads so I can see unraveling in front of me, it's great. So, what else we've been doing? Well, we've been doing some bike reviews uh, on the channel, so I've enjoyed doing that. Um, there's kind of a range of bikes that I, I can ride and, and review, and I think that's going quite well. I find every review is getting a little bit better. Uh, well, you may disagree. I mean, you're the you're the you're the audience. <laughs> it's not really for me to say, really. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to I'm trying to hone this art of, uh, of of making videos about bikes, trying to make it better and better all the time. And um, you know, better editing, uh, better production, better presentation by myself. You know, I, unlike a lot of people, I kind of. Uh, I don't take naturally to this kind of presentation malarkey. Uh, Susie, for example, can just do a single take and it sounds absolutely perfect. Uh, whereas I'm kind of a multi-take person, I'm kind of redoing it and rehashing it and then trying to pick the best, so just stop here, trying to pick the best video out of three or four takes. Um, and you end up with a lot of data on your hard drive of kind of crap footage, to be honest. Um, let's just put the visor up. But yeah, we're trying to get better. I mean, I, at the moment I'm on a, a cadence of about a video a month 
Oh, no, that is slow. Uh, I'm on about a video a week. Um, I've got a lot on at work, obviously. Uh, not every work task can be kind of tied in with a motorcycle trip. Um, and, uh, you know, Susie needs a bit of looking after as well. Uh, as well as kind of everything else in life. Uh, so we're on about one a week. And, um, you know, that's the kind of getting up there, filming, getting on location, filming with the bike. And um, then doing the editing. I found that going on to uh, Power Director has really helped me with editing. So that's something I'd suggest to people who are trying to get into this and trying to start making videos and editing. Don't be afraid to switch out your editing solution and get something that's a little bit um, different. If, you, if you're if pushing on and kind of into a headwind and struggling with one solution, you know, it's not too late to sort of cut your losses and start again. Um, that's exactly what I did with Premiere Pro. I uh, let me just navigate this small little road. I decided just to just to dump that software. I didn't like paying the subscription anyway, and go on to a, a more easy to use, I think, editing solution. And it's it's just paid huge dividends. There's there's little tricks in it where I just go, oh my god! I just click once. Or, you know, simple, simple things like zooming into a video. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, a static picture. So you'll be seeing the video unfold, I'll be muttering away, and then a picture will appear and you want to zoom into a static picture to make it feel like you're, um, it, it feels like it's moving or, you know, it feels more interesting than just a picture appearing and then um, disappearing. That, you just click pan and zoom on the uh, Power Director. Not all these lines and trajectories and thingy majiggies on uh, Premiere Pro, so I've really benefited from that hugely. And obviously the camera's going well. Um, one area where I'm a bit weak at at the moment is thumbnails. I don't know what thumbnails people click on and what they don't. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a dark art to me. I experimented with putting me on the thumbnail and then just a picture, like an arty picture of the motorcycle itself. I don't really think they, they give as much credence as people uh, make out the thumbnails. Maybe in certain sectors, but for, for making videos about bikes, a lot of people who are watching video know what they want. They see something in the title, they click on it anyway. You know, as long as you, your thumbnail doesn't look like it was made in uh, Microsoft Paint at uh, all Comic Sans or something daft. I mean, people generally like a picture of a bike and then I, I think they click on it. But I don't, that's about as far as, as much as I know about the thumbnails. Um, I don't know the great detail of, of whether they, what gets people to click or not. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're, we're trying to get better. I'm trying to practice. Obviously, I've been doing it for 18 months, two years now, um, and it's kind of ticking over this, this YouTube banaki. Uh, can't quit the day job just yet, I'm afraid. All right, guys, well, t we're going to drive up to, well, I don't know actually, uh, the next Airbnb, which apparently is like, it's called the Tiny, and it's Little Hut. Uh, halfway between here, uh, Versailles and Calais, uh, in nature hopefully, so we set there for the night and then it's actually only a fleeting visit, so I'm going to be heading from there back to the UK tomorrow on the on the channel. And I met some interesting people on the channel going uh, this way across, a guy from Belgium, or a couple of guys from Belgium, had a 1200 GS and a Tiger 1200, and we had a nice chat. They were saying basically the only reason they chose the 1200 is for the direct drive, obviously without the without the uh, the chain. So that was interesting. So they would need add the power that they need in a 900, but go for the the bigger bike, not on the basis of its engine, but on the um, on the drive system, because uh, no maintenance sort of thing. Uh, one of the other things as well, which I'm doing on this trip, is scoping out the well put put everything for a test checking everything on the bike doing a small trip before the big trip uh, which is coming out now I talked about this earlier in the year on the channel and oh, that's a nice motor and I'm gonna be doing a trip uh, up to Norway and it's something that's always appealed to me just because the isolation and the the rawness of the nature and the sort of the lack of people and that kind of thing and I was talking to these guys on the channel about it. This guy had been, he's from Belgium, so it's a bit easier to get to Norway than for us. But he'd been up there eight times to Norway, 10 times to Sweden, I think, something like that. 
and uh, he, he couldn't really sing its praises enough. He also doesn't think it'll be cold this time of year. Uh, so let's, uh, let's put that to the test because if it is freezing up there, um, and I'm planning on doing this in a couple of weeks, then then that's going to be uh, <laughs> make the trip more difficult. But let's hope it is a little, a little bit warmer. Um, here it's 22 degrees at the moment, so I'm loving it uh, in Paris or just outside Paris. But yeah, I want to test the bike, get everything uh, up to speed, and everything seems all right. Obviously, we haven't run the bike since last year on a proper run out, so. Uh, I just let the insurance renew automatically uh, with Bike Sure. I don't advertise for them or anything, but they just seem good, and everyone else, every other YouTuber seems to use them or at least promote their product. So uh, I decided to go with Bike Sure. Hopefully, it pays off if I ever do need the insurance. Um, the other thing which I was going to do was uh, change tyres. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the tyres on here, the Metzler Torrance, are Kind of a very mid-rangey tyre, they, they, they're good for kind of doing what I'm doing now, just sticking on the road and trundling along. Uh, I don't think they're that good off-road, when I test rode one of these, I took it into mud and obviously the tyre just totally gave up. I was spinning, putting mud everywhere, almost got the demo bike stuck, it was just a disaster to be honest. Uh, so I decided to go with some Continentals, and I do like Continental as a tyre choice. They uh, just seem to me a quality brand. I don't know much about tyres, but I decided I want to go for Continentals. I could have gone for kind of a road attack, um, like a road focused tyre, or I could have gone more towards the off road. But I didn't, strange as it sounds, I didn't really want a kind of middle halfway tyre. I wanted either good off road performance or good on road performance. I didn't want a compromised tyre. So, yeah, it was either road attack. Uh, which is a kind of sports touring tyre. And I thought about it, I thought, well, I've only got 47 horsepower. So, although you could sort of potentially, with good rubber, lean this bike over and have fun on the twisty roads up there in Norway, is it worth it? And I thought, for most of the riding I do, it's not really worth it to have super duper, uh, you know, kind of sticky, I say sticky, but a road tyre that's as sticky as it can be. So, my other option was to go more off-road, and I saw the TKC, TKC 70s. I thought, oh, I, I like the look of those, and uh, I read the reviews, and they were all quite good. Uh, but they released a new one called the TKC 70 Rocks. And the idea is that you basically have a more off-road, or a middle, a middle of the way tyre between the TKC 70 and TKC 80, which is proper off-road. So I've gone for the TKC, let me try just say the 70, that'll be easy, wouldn't it? I go for the 70 rocks. Uh, the idea being that it's halfway between the 70 and the 80, and they only do it in the rear. So what you the idea is you pair the rear with the front. And I'm hoping what that'll give me is the ability in Norway to take some tracks and dirt roads and that kind of thing without, you know, the risk of getting the bike totally stuck because obviously I don't, I'll be on my own, it's a solo tour, that kind of thing. Um, and potentially, you know, things could go wrong if I get you know, stuck in the mud or something. So I decided to go for some tyres that are going to be more of a compromise on road, um, but have the risk uh, of getting stuck off road dramatically reduced. You know, this, not a knobbly tyre, but it's, it's quite close to one. So I should be able to put the bike in gear and it, the back wheel just grip and pull me out of whatever I get stuck in. Um, Obviously, of course, I'm not going to be leaning the bike over or doing any fast bends or anything as a result, but that's fine, you know. I'll have full luggage, so a pack strapped to the back and everything like that, so that's the tyre choice I've gone for and a bit of the reasoning behind it, really. That's weird, I'm going 47, flashed up. So I will be filming the Norway trip on the channel. I'm not going to reveal too much about it just yet. I've been making plans, I've been preparing, I've been writing lists, I've been looking at routes, I've been reading books. I've been doing a lot of um, research on it just to try and make sure I have the best possible experience. It, uh, it's a funny one really because 
I always get torn between doing high mile days and like, you know, gunning it. I did it, I did it yesterday, to tell the truth. I rode from Worcester in the UK in the Midlands all the way down to Paris, 700 kilometers in a day. And the tunnel as well, which I suppose is a break. But uh, I, I kind of, I like that achievement of doing big mile days, but then what you, what you don't realize is a lot of it is motorway work. Um, and I've only got a 47 horsepower. It's not that enjoyable. Um, there's just kind of constant wind noise. So if your earplugs, if you forget your earplugs, you're in trouble. Um, you drink, you know, drink a lot of fuel at the highest speeds. Don't see anything. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a disaster, really, in terms of the enjoyment of the tour. So with the Norway thing, I'm kind of torn because I can either go there. Um, and I've got plans to get there, which I will reveal in later videos, but I could go there and ride around the fjords and just have a nice time, see stuff, find some nice places to camp and just share that experience. Or, and here's the temptation, which always gets me. Hey buddy. Or I could gun it and try and go as far north as possible and get to the Arctic Circle. Now, if you are watching the video at this stage, well done for staying with us. Uh, I appreciate you listening to my ramble, but drop a note in the comment on what you think would be more, well, let's just put it out there. What would you think would be more interesting um, for the channel to go some sort of fjordland touring and seeing the, the spectacular fjords and glaciers and that kind of thing? Or do you think going to the Arctic Circle would be wild and trying to camp up there and that kind of thing? Because I'm actually torn between the two. I haven't even decided yet, and the trip's potentially a couple of weeks away. I'll just go around this person. What does the yellow flashing light mean in France? This is the problem with being from England, isn't it? I'm gonna go for it. Round and round we go. Uh, 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 oh, must be on the highway. Right, well, if I'm going on the highway, guys, I'm gonna sign off because that's when the wind noise picks up, videos become crappy. So I hope you've enjoyed this little update and I'll either end the video here or I'll check in with you later. So if I do end the video, I hope you've enjoyed it and leave a like, please. And uh, yeah, just nice to speak to you all. <laughs> I just like chatting away. So I hope you've, uh, if you're still here by this end of this video, then uh, thanks a lot for listening. And yeah, I, uh, I'll see you soon. Bye guys. Right, well, I'm trying to find this little building. It's a night's accommodation called the Tiny. And I'm told it's down here somewhere to the right. So, where or where could it be? Is it down there? Hmm, and it looks a little bit off the beaten track as well. Take the path to the right. Is that it? down here and have a look around. I've took my gloves off because I kind of want full control over the motorcycle across this terrain. Is that it? Right, I can see it. It's over there. So I think, don't think it's down there. I think the road up there, as she said in the instructions, to the right goes there. I'm just going to have to be careful on this rough stuff. Must be down here. See if the bike can take it, shall we? If not, you'll be entertained anyway, guys. <laughs> right, which way shall I go? Stick in the middle, probably. Wow, man, this is hard work. I don't concentrate so much. Whoa! Shit! <laughs> oh. Oh, that's hard. Oh, I could have taken the easy route, couldn't I? Whew, right, 
No, I just need to get, <laughs> get around this bend. Not slide out on wet grass or whatever. Done it. And that is our room for the night. So. Job done. Have a quick look, see what it looks like. Oh, mud on my shoes. Oh, very nice. Just take these boots off. I'm gonna have a look inside.